Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Starting with a live look out of the Alamo City, 76 degrees out there now, but that does not tell the full story. If you look out there, you can't see the sunshine. You can't see any of the blue in the sky, and it feels like it was yesterday. Good morning. It is 8 o'clock this Sunday. It is September 18th, and happy you birthday to the Air Force, first and foremost. 75th? 75th. Hey, you look great. <laughs> Looking great. You can't see the humidity. No, but outside. you can feel it. You can feel it. Your hair feels it. Your clothes, it sticks to your skin, Sarah. Yeah, it is so humid out there and a lot like yesterday, it's going to stay humid into the afternoon too. So not necessarily feeling that crisp fall feeling that we like to feel occasionally in September. It's still hot and it's going to continue to be hot today. Take a look outside. There are some breaks in those clouds and very soon here, here we will start to see those clouds clear at the airport though, where this camera is, it's 76 degrees and winds are from the southeast at about five miles per hour. But again, same old, same old here in San Antonio today. It is very humid outside. Dew points are in the 70s. Yesterday we had a stout southeasterly wind continuing to bring in that Gulf of Mexico moisture. Humidity is at the top of the scale right now. Oppressively humid, icky, sticky outside. And during the day today, that humidity is going to stay pretty high. We'll be at 82 at 10, partly cloudy around noon with 87 degrees, and then 95 for the high temperature. South southeast winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour that 95 is going to feel more like 100 degrees. Now, even though we did have some rain earlier to start the month, it is continuing to be a very dry year around San Antonio. I have a look at rain chances ahead in the week and our September sizzle will continue on. Sarah and Max. Thank you, Sarah. Now to that shooting where more than 100 gunshots fired on the city's far west side overnight. So this is what we know right now. Police say six people involved in the shooting. One of them shot multiple times in the back. He was taken to University Hospital at last check in a serious condition. This happened just after 1130 last night on Cormorant and Water's Edge in a neighborhood near Ingram and Marbach Road. Investigators say the shooting started as a drug deal and ended in gunfire between two vehicles that spanned several blocks. Now during the shootout, bullets hit a parked car with two women inside. Luckily, those individuals were not injured. Bullets also hitting another parked vehicle with no one in it. Investigators say everyone involved took off after the gunfire, but police are still investigating. They plan to question the one person who was shot. San Antonio police are still looking for the driver accused of hitting a man while he was walking and then took off. The Bear County Medical Examiner's Office identified 50-year-old Rafael Villarreal as the victim. San Antonio police say his body was found in the westbound lane of Loop 410 Wednesday morning. Investigators say he was walking along Loop 410 near Ingram when someone in a car struck him and drove off. And hundreds of thousands of mourners continue to wait up to 10 hours to pay their last respects to Queen Elizabeth II. Today, King Charles will host a reception at Buckingham Palace for heads of state and official overseas guests. All of this ahead of the state funeral for tomorrow. All of this for the late queen. ABC's Enos de la Catera has the latest from London. An emotional moment as the queen's grandchildren stood vigil beside her coffin. This, as thousands continue to brave the cold, standing in the queue, snaking through central London, in some cases for more than 22 hours. We've got four hours to go, and it would be reflective, and which is what it's about. So that's what it's about for you? Sure, reflection. It's a very British thing to do, is the queue, yes. They are calling it the queue of all queues, so... Uh, it's, a, it's nice to be taking part in it as well. These satellite images showing the line stretching for miles around the city's most famous landmarks. Some mourners getting a surprise visit from members of the royal family, King Charles, Prince William, coming out to greet well-wishers. It could be argued that the royal line of succession is in itself a very long and proud queue. Aubrey Blunt, a self-proclaimed Q enthusiast, will not be joining the queue, but just had to come out and see it. I've seen a lot of queues in my lifetime. I've seen festival queues, I've seen toilet queues, I've seen queues at job centers and food banks, but nothing as it compares to the magnitude of this queue. Blunt calling the queue breathtaking. It's a braver person than me that could actually stand in this queue for this long. I'm honestly just in awe of everyone I've seen today. I'm so proud of them for making this happen, the biggest queue in history, and I'm just so thrilled to witness it. 
Meanwhile, as final preparations for the Queen's funeral are underway, King Charles meeting with some of the world leaders who are in town, including the leaders of Canada, Australia, New Zealand and Jamaica, while the Queen consort paid tribute to the Queen. She's got those wonderful blue eyes that when she smiles, you know, they light up her whole face. I'll always remember that smile. You know, that smile is unforgettable. Around 2,000 people will attend the Queen's State funeral on Monday and today a reception for world leaders. Only working royals have been invited, so Harry, Meghan and Andrew will not attend. Inez de la Quatera, ABC News, London. Well, back here at home, Northside ISD, almost a month into the school year. And for some students, families and teachers, this is really their first time back in person. So joining us in today's leading essay segment is Northside ISD Deputy Superintendent for Curriculum and Instruction, Dr. Janice Jordan. Dr. Jordan, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Good morning. Thank you for having me. So, Dr. Jordan, we see a lot of reports that show students math and reading scores. They've gone down in the aftermath of this pandemic. Have you guys seen the same impact? You know, we certainly have. We anticipated it would take us, you know, multiple years for students to get back to pre-pandemic levels in their reading performance and mathematics performance. Math in particularly has been hit the hardest. Uh, the great news is our students, through the tremendous work of our teachers um, and parents coming together, we've seen terrific gains. Uh, we still have a ways to go, though. Uh, we focus on all of our students, and we have certain student groups who have more gaps than others. Um, so we're continuing to walk the path of targeted instruction and are hoping we continue to see that growth. So, Dr. Jordan, are there new academic initiatives in place that families in the community should know about? Yes, we're really excited to expand our efforts in STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math. Uh, we have a couple of magnet schools that focus on STEM, but we are actually now moving STEM concepts throughout all campuses in the district that focus on higher order thinking skills. Uh, meaningful problem solving. So we're just beginning those efforts um, to move it beyond just certain schools. Uh, we're happy to report that this year, all of our elementary schools have uh, a lab that's a STEM lab where students rotate in and do coding, do building, um, take things apart innovate. So uh, we're very excited to help raise the level for all students, no matter what campus. In terms of, you know, compensating for the last two years of a lot of students, a lot of families losing a sort of education, you know, do you guys have any special plans to catch up those students? And uh, you mentioned a, a bigger gap with a specific group of students. What are those specific groups? Um, yes, yeah, so our students who received special education services, uh, we saw a bigger hit to their performance, which makes sense. Those are students who have very specific needs that our schools are best equipped to meet those needs. So when those children are not in our schools, uh, we certainly do the best that we can. Our students who are emergent bilingual, um, also, our schools are the best places for their needs to be met. Um, so any gap in their education has a larger impact. So we are targeting, um, certainly we want to raise a level for all students with high quality instruction every day. Um, but we are specifically targeting those students to make sure that we know exactly where they are academically and create individualized plans so they can make the growth that they need. So Dr. Jordan, NISD is set to begin single member redistricting. So what should families know and how should they get involved? So um, our website, www.nisd.net is the best place to start. There is information about uh, this process. And to be clear, this is not changing the attendance zones for any campus. This isn't changing the north side external attendance zone. Um, so this is a very open process. We had a community meeting last week for input. Uh, 
Uh, we have another community meeting this next week on September 20th. And so we invite the public, if they have ideas, to um, come bring them to us. And again, check the website uh, for more information on that. All right, Dr. Jordan, thank you so much for taking your time this morning, joining us, and anyone who has any questions about anything that we talked about, we're going to have all that information on KSAT.com. Thank you, ma'am. Thanks so much. Time now, 810, 76 degrees out. All right, from restaurants with high scores to a meat grinder that was not properly cleaned up, that's next as we go behind the kitchen door. Let's take a quick live look out at the Alamo City. 76 now. How warm will it get today? What will the work week look like? Our Sarah Spivey has it all in just a bit. Welcome back. Every week, KSAT's Behind the Kitchen Door keeps our viewers updated with the weekly restaurant reports. We track the latest health inspection scores, and we bring it all to you. So we want to tell you about four local restaurants who had scores in the 80s. They also had plenty of violations to correct after recent visits from health inspectors. From a meat grinder coated in leftover meats to employees touching food with dirty hands. Here's more with Behind the Kitchen Door. First up, Taqueria Los Dos Laredos in the 400 block of South New Braunfels on the east side earned an 80. Dirty pots, pans, and other utensils needed to be rewashed while spice containers were dirty on the inside and outside. Shelves, handles, and the insides of coolers all needed to be cleaned. So did the floors and ceiling. All expired food handler certificates needed to be renewed. <laughs> Urban Pickle, located in this office tower in the 1700 block of Northeast Loop 410, got an 81. Their cold hold unit wasn't cold enough. The inside of the ice machine was dirty, and the can opener was full of grime and dirt. An employee was seen cracking an egg while using gloves and then touching ready-to-eat foods without changing gloves or washing their hands. Another employee was caught touching ready-to-eat food with bare hands and no hand washing. Medicine belonging to a worker was also found on a rack right above ready-to-eat food. <laughs> Las Concas, Torteria, and Panaderia in the 1100 block of South General McMullen comes in with an 83. They were cited for keeping the front and back doors propped open, allowing insects to get inside. Nymph roaches were found in a restroom and office area. Ants were also a problem. A reinspection was ordered. <laughs> Thrifty Mart in the 6700 block of South Zarzamora got an 85. Unpackaged meat in the freezer was touching the wire rack and other meats. More meat was found stored on the floor. A meat grinder and slicer had leftover meat and food debris stuck to them. The inspector didn't see anyone wash their hands during this inspection. There were also several flies in the kitchen and a door handle was soiled with residue. That's what's behind the kitchen door. Tim Gerber, KSAT 12 News. We are also tracking businesses that have better scores. Just take out your phone, scan this QR code on your screen. It'll take you to a new mapping tool that show all the scores for local food businesses. The reports go back six months and they are frequent, frequently updated. All right, time now, 816, 77 degrees. So Sarah Spivey, how warm will it get today? Well, if you want to talk about technical temperatures, mid 90s. Okay. If you want to talk about the heat index, no. it's <laughs> going to feel like it's close to 100 degrees outside. And yeah, unfortunately, no big rain chances for us. A couple of coastal showers are possible. You know, the first part of September was pretty good to us, right? We got about an inch of rain since September 1st. But by this point in September, we should have more than two inches of rainfall. So we are experiencing a rain deficit for the month. And it's really bad when you look at the year, if I'm just being honest with you. So since January 1st, we've really only seen a little bit more than an more than eight inches of rainfall and that is actually more than a foot of rain deficit for us in San Antonio. We should have almost 15 inches of rain in addition to that eight inches of rainfall. And so even though we have seen regional improvements to the drought monitor with very little to no rain in our future, we may see drought conditions worsen locally around San Antonio and South Central Texas. As for rain chances, both today and tomorrow, some coastal showers are possible. One or two of those may try to make it to that I-35 corridor, so the chance for rain is about 10% both today and tomorrow. But in the week ahead, 
really, really difficult to see anything that's going to be giving us any kind of rain. And, and here's the reason why. As you look at the satellite radar across the nation, you can see that there's plenty of rain for North uh, California, across the Central Plains, some rainfall out toward the Great Lakes as well. But all of that is moving up and over Texas because of this blocking high pressure system. High pressure system compresses the air at the surface and prevents uh, showers and storms from developing in a major way. And this high is going to win out compared to that trough of low uh, pressure out in Northern California. Now, while we're dry, it's a different story for Puerto Rico today. This is Tropical Storm Fiona, almost a hurricane. It's probably going to be gaining hurricane strength here within a, a few hours. You can see it's actually organizing and it's just the center of Fiona is just passing to the south of the island of Puerto Rico, but that's actually bad news for them because Puerto Rico is going to be on the side of the storm that brings the highest wind and the highest amount of rain. So wind gusts of up to 95 miles per hour are possible, especially on the south side of the island. 16 to 25 inches of rain is going to create some flooding issues and mudslide risks across the island of Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic will be impacted by Fiona as well. Now Fiona is expected to stay away from the mainland uh, of the United States, but it could impact Bermuda as a category two hurricane by the end of this week. Outside right now, we are starting to see the skies clear around San Antonio, still mostly cloudy though, 76 and locally it's 75 in Hondo, 74 in Kerrville. Good morning in New Braunfels, it's 74, 75 in Del Rio and 72 in Carrizo Springs. Your KSAT 12 hour forecast calls for clearing skies, warming temperatures. It'll be 87 by lunch and then in the afternoon we'll be in the 90s. 4 p.m. to about 7 p.m. we have a 10% chance for a stray shower, 95 for the high temperature, winds from the southeast today five to 10 miles per hour. Locally, it's going to be hot. 96 in Seguin, 97 in New Braunfels, 95 in Castroville, 95 in Floresville, 96 in Gonzales, and 93 in Kerrville. And the humidity, even though it will go down a little bit in the afternoon, dew points will fall into the 60s, it's still going to be humid during the peak heat of the day in the afternoon. So that means that 95 is going to feel closer to 100. Look at these uh, forecast heat index values. 101 New Braunfels and Seguin, 102 Floresville, Nixon Smiley. Very hot today, so if you have outdoor plans between about 2 p.m. to 7 p.m., stay hydrated. We're going to see a pretty similar forecast through the week. The one thing that's going to change is look at those morning lows Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Near 70 degrees, not too bad. Humidity will be nice and low for the morning hours. It's still going to be hot, though, for the first official day of fall. We'll be at 97. Coming up, Fido's forecast, pictures of your dogs and your dog walking forecast. I've got that for you coming up in just a bit. Max and Sarah. I love the Fido's forecast. Me you too. You started off. Scooby was the first. Well, Scooby is a professional model. He's a trendsetter. <laughs> He's her dog, for oh, those yeah, yeah. who don't Scooby know. Scooby is my dog. He's watching at home on the couch. Hi, Scooby. Time now, 821, 77 degrees. Out. All right, if you have been having trouble with keeping the wallet light during grocery shopping with inflation, we'll give you some tips on how to shop for budget friendly meals. Let's take a look at those lotto numbers. Pick three, one, three, nine, fireball two, daily four, one, two, nine, zero, fireball zero. Cash five, 14, 15, 30, 32, 34, Texas lotto, five, nine, 18, 22, 35, 48. Powerball 5, 25, 36, 51, 61, Powerball 1, Power Play 3. It's at 238 million. Good luck. <laughs> While not a major holiday in Mexico and often confused with Mexico's Day of Independence, Cinco de Mayo is celebrated across the United States and especially in Texas because of one man, General Ignacio Zaragoza. Zaragoza, a native of Goliad, Texas, helped lead the charge at the Battle of Puebla and a victory over the French Army during the Franco-Mexican War on the 5th of May, 1862. The victory helped boost the morale of the Mexican Army and the people with a sense of national pride and patriotism. But General Zaragoza didn't enjoy his victory for very long. Only four months after the Battle of Puebla, he died of typhoid fever at the age of 33. The first celebrations of Cinco de Mayo said to have taken place in California. 
Today, Ignacio Zaragoza is remembered as a symbol of Texas valor. And with deep ties to Mexico, Cinco de Mayo has become part of Texas culture. During the month of September, the KSAC community is partnering with the San Antonio Food Bank. We are raising awareness about food insecurity. So if you've had a hard time saving money or spending too much on groceries, I think we've all felt it because of inflation, the San Antonio Food Bank has some advice for you. First, plan ahead. Make a grocery list and look for sales before you head to the store. And lastly, be willing to make replacements for ingredients in your recipes. We have more information about budget-friendly meals on our website on ksat.com. Time now, 827, 77 degrees out. A hurricane warning issued for Puerto Rico has many concerned of rolling blackouts. We'll tell you about that next. And Bed Bath & Beyond closing some of their stores, trying to stay afloat. We're going to explain which stores and why in the next half hour. Good morning and happy Sunday. I'm Max Massey. I'm Sarah Costa. It's Sunday, September 18th. Thank you so much for waking up with us. Sarah, I, I didn't pay attention to the heat yesterday and I went out in it in the afternoon. That was a bad choice, but I did pay attention to your Fido's forecast mm. and I walked my dogs early. If only Way we had go. someone telling us it was going to be hot in the afternoon. <laughs> and if only we had someone who would pay attention <laughs> the whole time. I'm just messing with you, Sarah. I was paying attention. I was not. I'm just messing with you. And you do bring up a good point. You know, that humidity kind of sneaks up on you when it comes to the heat. And so today, just know that it is going to be humid and hot, Sarah, okay? So hydrate. All right, 76 degrees in the airport, 76 at Stinson, 77 at Kelly, and 75 near Converse, uh, JBSA Randolph. So a warm morning here, and it's all about that humidity, as we've been saying. Dew points are in the low 70s. Here's Fido's forecast. We got this wonderful picture sent in of Buddy. Thank you for sending in the picture of your pup. If you want to send in pictures uh, for Fido's forecast of your dogs, go ahead and scan that QR code right there. It's gonna take you to our KSAC Connect feature. Not only can you bring up beautiful pictures of your dog, like Buddy, but you can uh, upload pictures of the weather and we love to show your weather pictures as well. So if you're planning on taking a walk today with your dog, as Sarah mentioned, do it in the morning. It's going to get hot in the afternoon, 95 for the high temperature with a heat index near 100. So thank you for sending in that picture of Buddy. We're also hopeful to send in some pictures of some pups who need homes from animal shelters and things like that. Today, the, uh, the high temperature will be in the mid 90s, but it's going to feel close to 100. Any rain? Well, mainly coastal showers today. 10% chance for San Antonio to see a shower. And this week, we got that September sizzle. Temperatures will be pretty hot as we officially start fall on Thursday. Details on that coming up in a few minutes. Sarah and Max. Thank you, Sarah. Well, this morning, a man in critical condition after being hit by a train overnight on the city's west side. This is what we know right now. San Antonio police tell us this all happened by West Laurel Street near downtown. Now, originally, police couldn't find the man after he was hit, but they walked down the track and they found the blood. Now, they then found this victim under the train. EMS called to the scene. The man was transported to Bamsey. Well, this morning, a man is dead after shooting and killing a 41 year old woman and then killing himself. And this happened yesterday afternoon. The Bear County Sheriff's Office SWAT team spent hours pleading with a 42 year old man inside of a home on Knoll, in the Knoll Creek subdivision to turn himself in before he eventually took his own life. It happened after the man shot the woman at her home on Capstone Ridge while the SWAT team negotiated with the man for two hours. Family members tell KSAT the victim was his ex-wife. We love her. Oh, um, yeah, she'll be missed. Yeah. Anybody else in a relationship that's abusive or scared to speak out or, you know, whatever the case may be, man, the best thing to do is, is tell somebody. Authorities say the couple was living separately and their names have not been officially released by police. This investigation is ongoing. In your morning headlines, the U.S. Geological Survey says a 6.9 magnitude earthquake hitting Taiwan's southeastern coast. So images from the area showing some of this devastation that it caused. Now you see here several buildings collapsing, a train even being derailed because of the earthquake. The island's official central news agency reporting at least three people trapped under a collapsed building. 
Alaska is facing severe weather. People captured video footage of the effects of a typhoon. Just take a look. The video shows the water creeping closer and closer to cars and buildings. Officials say water levels are more than eight feet above normal. Streets have been shut down and there's an emergency shelter for people now as well. Along with the rising water, there is also reports that the wind peaked at 65 to 75 miles per hour in some areas on Friday night. A hurricane warning now issued for Puerto Rico this morning, and people are stocking up on items. Hurricane Fiona lashing at the Caribbean forecast to dump over 20 inches of rain. Here's ABC's Victor Kendo with the latest. This morning, Fiona barreling towards Puerto Rico, now under a hurricane warning. The tropical storm dumping rain throughout the Caribbean, one person killed near the island of Guadalupe. Residents in San Juan with last minute preparations, stocking up on supplies, boarding up homes and businesses. The locals know the drill, now bracing for blackouts, with thousands already without power. On a much smaller storm, will you lose power? <laughs> Every single day. Fiona's winds and rain could cause real problems in Puerto Rico, from flooding and mudslides to widespread outages. The island's power grid is notoriously fragile. We spoke with the new utility company in charge of fixing it. Should the people of Puerto Rico feel more confident in the power grid now than in the months past, the years past? Absolutely. We've done quite a bit of work. We replaced quite a bit of poles, uh, but we're not finished. We have a lot more to do. Larry Duke and his wife Trina now preparing for their first tropical storm. Oh, we got chicken, we got snacks, we got uh, fruits, drinks. You know, we, we, I mean, hey, ain't nothing that we can do. It was nearly five years ago to the day Hurricane Maria battered Puerto Rico. Nearly 3,000 people died in the wake of the storm. That was Victor Okendo reporting. Oh, Bed Bath & Beyond trying to stay afloat, which means layoffs and shutdowns. Now, the retailer planning to close 150 of their stores. They just announced 50 of them spread out across the country from Arizona to Washington State. The company trying to rescue itself from having to file bankruptcy. They hope that cutting jobs and closing down stores, along with more than $500 million in financing, well, they hope that'll help them stay afloat because the business model itself, it is struggling against other big box stores and, of course, Amazon's low prices. Now to an update of that shooting where police say over 100 shots were fired, spanning over several blocks is hip happening on the city's far west side last night. Camelia Juarez joining us live from the scene. So, Camelia, how does it look out there? Well, Max, Sarah, we've just gotten out here and right now we spoke to a couple neighbors and they tell us that they heard the gunfire. And right behind me is a charger that is riddled with bullets. I mean, you can see there's about six bullet holes across the car. There's even a flat tire um, on it. And we're told that the, the shooting was going on last night and even a car fell into or drove into one of the buildings. San Antonio police say it started on as a drug deal on Cremorman Street around 11 last night. We've learned at least six people were shooting at each other down the street. San Antonio police say, uh, like you said, the crime scene is several blocks long. When police arrived, they found one man shot in the back several times. He was taken to University Hospital in critical condition and two women sitting in a car were caught in that crossfire, except for obviously these bullet holes that we see in the car. Now, right now, the wounded suspect is at University Hospital and detectives are trying to learn more information from him. Reporting live on the west side, Camelia Juarez, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Camelia. Time now just about 839, 77 degrees out. Oh my gosh, this video is going to be so good. I just feel bad. I feel bad. Now we can chuckle about it, Why Sarah. Why don't you tell people about it? Okay, so KSAT tried the hot chip challenge. Yeah. And it was hot, including our very own Sarah Spivey. <laughs> John Paul Barajas was a champ, though. Got to give him credit. All right, we got sports to talk about, a lot of big game coverage, everything you need to know, and what comes next. We got NFL action today. Hot like the hot chip challenge, so is the weather. Even though fall is only a couple days away, not feeling like it, Sarah Spivey will have our Sunday forecast when we come back. Good morning. Coming up on this week, we'll have a live report from the U.S.-Mexico border as Republican governors send thousands of migrants north in a protest over the Biden administration's policies. I'll speak with two leaders dealing with the humanitarian and political fallout, the mayor of El Paso 
and the mayor of New York City. Plus, a This Week exclusive. I'll talk to Ukraine's ambassador to the United States about new evidence of Russian war crimes and Joe Biden's warning to Vladimir Putin not to use chemical or nuclear weapons. All that and more coming up on This Week. All right, welcome back. We had a lot going on over the weekend. Yesterday's a big game coverage over at Hero Stadium. Number nine, Johnson taking on Churchill. Second quarter, Jags up 10-0. Ty Hawkins hitting Caden Rizzo. Ooh, walking in for a nine-yard score. 17-0 lead. Next, Johnson possession. They strike again. Fourth and three, Hawkins finding Lauren Johnson. Look at that. Shoestring grab, breaking a tackle, cuts back against the green, racing the end zone. 29-yard score. They wouldn't even touch him three yards in. That's a touchdown, and Jags led 24-3 at halftime. They go on to win big 30-17, and that is not all. Number 11, Burbank, return to Alamo Stadium, hosting Highland. Owls catching the Bulldogs off guard, opening kickoff. Ooh, here y'all. Salazar recovers his own onside kick. Two plays later, Highland going deep. Joseph Clay to Kennedy Jackson behind the defense. 37 yards, 7-0. Owls, Burbank answers, though. Very next drive, Kevin Hernandez rolling out. Finding Jordan Palmo, Enzo, nine yards score, tied it up at seven, but oh my goodness, it ended up being a big win, 40 to 21 all owls. And we're just starting the day off because obviously UTSA, UT last night. We have NFL action today, Texans versus Broncos, Cowboys, Bengals, both at 325. So the Cowboys, obviously a quarterback situation going on right now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I got a hot take. Okay. Okay. Let's hear it. I'm going to try to get back on camera for this one. So the Ravens have looked phenomenal. All the credit to Lamar Jackson. All the credit to the defense. They're not getting a lot enough love. Are you going to say what I think you're so going to say? So I think, I know it's just week one. This is a week one, week one and a half. Overreaction, and the purple actually works. Ravens win the Super Bowl. Bold. Who you got? I'm here for the commercials. Okay. Commercials always win. Sarah, Sarah Spivey. Spivey. Chiefs. Ooh. Chiefs. Mm. They did look My good Thursday. The Chiefs. They look good Thursday. Now, kudos to the defense. Chiefs turned it around there with that pick six from the 99-yard line. Pretty awesome. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look out at the uh, uh, South Central Texas. We do have a couple of isolated showers near Beeville right now. Most of the rain today is going to be coastal and isolated, but it is quiet across Texas in general today. Uh, take a look uh, out to the west. We've got a trough of low pressure bringing some healthy rains to North Texas, but notice that all of the rain pretty much goes up and over the state. Well, that's because we have got a ridge of high pressure right over Texas right now. That high pressure system, it blocks rain from developing in a big way, and it also makes it hot, summertime hot. Take a look at the heat this week. Tomorrow will be at 95, a lot like today. And then as we head into the middle of the week, not only is it going to be hot here in San Antonio, but across the Central Plains, we're looking at triple digits up in Kansas and in Nebraska this week. Very uh, summer like with that heat high right overhead. And then as we head into the latter half of the week too, we'll be seeing temperatures in the upper 90s. Our only saving grace is that during the second half of the week, our humidity is going to come down a, a little bit. But that high is really going to keep out any good rain chances and we really need rain. September is one of our rainiest months. Only a couple of coastal showers possible today and tomorrow. And then the rest of the week does look pretty dry. I told you those morning clouds are going to clear out. We're seeing plenty of blue skies out there at the airport right now. 76 degrees feels like 76, but you still feel that humidity. Dew points in the uh, mid, a uh, low to mid 70s right now. Good morning in Hondo. It's 75, already 81 in Divine, 72 in Seguin, 74 in New Braunfels, 71 in Comfort, 74 in Kerrville. Again, the humidity is the big story today, much like yesterday. As soon as you step outside, you feel the humidity and it's going to couple with the heat this afternoon and make it feel a lot hotter than what the thermometer actually reads. Here's a look at that high risk future cast. Like I said, coastal showers isolated today uh, from Corpus Christi to Beeville to Victoria to Houston. And there is an off chance 10% that one or two of those could make it to San Antonio in the later afternoon hours. Generally, though, just going to be a hot one for us. High temperature of 95 in Eagle Pass in Del Rio, 96 in Gonzales, 95 Canyon Lake, 89 in Rock Springs, 95 in Hondo. Neighborhood view around San Antonio, Poteet, 95, 97 in New Braunfels, 96 in Seguin, 
95 in Converse, 92 in Lotus, and 92 in Bernie. But the heat index is going to be a factor today, as I mentioned. So as we look at uh, the afternoon hours, that 95 is going to feel a lot more like 100 out there. Still technically, we're one 100 degree day away from having the most 100 days in a year. And although I'm forecasting 97 on Thursday, Friday, it's not out of the question that if we get dry enough, we could end up seeing that. We'll, we'll keep an eye on that for now, though. Know that the only thing to really look forward to in the weather this week is lower temperatures in the morning, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. It'll feel okay outside with uh, morning lows near 70 degrees. Well, we'll be back with more news and a hot chip challenge after the break. All right, KSAT did a hot chip challenge in one of GMSA's own participated in it. All right, let's take a look at how the whole team handled it. Oh, that's not good. <coughs> oh, not good. All right. Okay. But it's starting to get really hot. <laughs> no. You got mind over matter. To be honest with you, it's like hard to talk because like every time you talk like the heat from your breath makes the heat worse. I'm gonna just, get a hiccup. We'll just talk it out. Oh my god. You like spicy food, right? I don't like this. Do you wanna read milk facts? <laughs> According to the US Dairy Council, milk, I'm gonna cry. <sighs> milk helps your mouth handle capsaicin, an oily chemical compound, and chili peppers. It just gets worse, like it doesn't get better. Like it's not. Like it really feels like my mouth is on fire. Uh, my world's on fire, how about yours? Oh my gosh, this is the worst. I have to more. One, two, three, three four. four. I declare it done more. Oh my mouth. I'm just feeling like if I licked a volcano and then jumped into fire, and then Cassie's canyon hit me in the face. <laughs> I'm not that bad. I'm doing okay. This is the spiciest thing I've ever eaten in my life. How much more time is left? Ah! Okay, how long has it been? Two, one. Ah! Cheers. Thanks for not letting me do this alone. I'm good. You're a psycho. Okay, so I think John Paul's been a little machismo there, but Just a here's bit. the thing. Okay, the challenge was to eat this Pocky hot chip and wait five minutes before you drink milk. I love spicy food. This was the spiciest thing I've ever eaten. I'm going to tell you, don't do it. Absolutely do it so not do it. Spicy. It's Carolina Reaper and ghost pepper okay. powder, and it turns your mouth blue like that's like a kitschy thing. Do not do it. I'm not kidding. Do not do it. It makes people sing. Listen, okay, yes. Makes you sing. Okay, makes but <laughs> it was the spiciest thing I've ever eaten in my life. The pain in the mouth lasts for like 10 minutes, but it was bad. I'm gonna let the you pain, fill in the, the pain travel. I'm gonna let you fill in the <laughs> the blank. It's, okay. It's all, it seems like a shot you were taking at me, by the way. Max you tell people the back story? Because he supposed to listen, do the challenge. There was no he, supposed to. He chickened out on me. There was no chickening oh, out. No. She Yay. kindly asked. It would have been chickening out if I made a commitment and then backed out. You said you want to do this with me, and I was like, no, I'm good. I, Sarah, it I seems like I made the right I'm decision. I'm glad you didn't do it, Dylan. Coot, thank you, Dylan. Dylan didn't want me to do it alone. He was really nice. Very but kind. We commiserated together. Sarah, yeah. I think you were very brave. You were. And I love your vulnerability. I applaud you. Okay. Great uh, voice in the singing. John what was Paul with the singing? Barajas. I, I think I could have been a little more honest. Mm. Spicy forecast, too. Take a look Ooh. really quickly at these high temperatures over the next five days. Seven days will be in the upper 90s with feel like temperatures near 100. Do not do the hot chip challenge. Don't do it. Have a great rest Sarah of the day. Sarah Spivey did it for you. <laughs> <laughs> Kiss